In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. This Sunday is the first Sunday of the calendar year, and if you're anything like me, you're probably still coming out of the holiday haze. Yes, school for some of us has already been in session for a few days, but I still feel like I am kind of trying to spin up back into real life. Yesterday was January 6th, the Feast of the Epiphany, and today is the Feast of the Baptism of Our Lord. Yesterday, we recognized and remembered the story of the wise men bringing gifts to the baby Jesus. And today, we mark the beginning of Jesus' public ministry with his baptism. Now, although oftentimes those days are separated, and certainly when it comes to the chronology, they're very separate, I think they go hand in hand. And it's important for us to kind of see how they meld together in order to inspire us this new calendar year to begin again the journey with Christ that we began so long ago with our baptism. Now, we didn't hear the story today of the three kings, the wise men who showed up to Mary and Joseph and Jesus, but we know that story pretty well. In fact, we know that story so well that we can miss what is perhaps so amazing, extraordinary about that story. You see, much of our Christian history, our Christmas history, is based on the epiphany story. Remember a few weeks ago, we all exchanged gifts, right? Gifts being that mark of Christmas. And we do so because the wise men brought gifts to Jesus. And the wise men didn't just bring regular gifts to Jesus. That was what was so remarkable. If you imagine putting yourself in that position, Mary and Joseph, although they loom so large in our own collective mind, were nothing, right? These people were nothing, poorer than poor. And yet these wise men, these kings, showed up to present gifts, gifts that were so lavish and so expensive, they could never be repaid. And that might make sense to us because, you know, we like Jesus, but At that point in time in history, gifts were given in order to get something, right? People presented gifts to those who could do something good for them, right? People presented gifts to kings and other rulers in order to curry favor with them or to perhaps prevent bad things from happening. And yet here we have these wise men who traveled who knows how far to present gifts that could never be repaid to a baby. That recognition, that epiphany that these wise men had is what has inspired people for thousands of years. In fact, the reason we give gifts is because St. Nicholas back in the fourth century decided to surprise people with gifts, and that tradition evolved into the tradition of Santa Claus, which we still maintain today, and we exchange these gifts not necessarily for repayment. Uh, We should not do them for repayment, but we give gifts simply out of love for the people in our lives. Now, Epiphany, although it is about the wise men, is also about a realization or a manifestation of God's truth. Epiphany literally means manifestation or appearance. And so today, the day after the Epiphany, we recognize the baptism of our Lord, Baptism is a moment, you've heard me say before, when we begin a journey. For all of us who began a journey in baptism, or for those who will begin their journey today, it is a lifetime experience. And the way that the gospel writers have formed the story of Jesus marks his beginning of public ministry with baptism as well. Baptism is this critical moment where God is manifested tangibly inside each one of us. Baptism is not just a checkbox. Baptism is a place to begin a journey that takes our entire lives. When we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, we baptize those in our community. We also, when we baptize anyone, renew our own baptismal vows. When we say those vows today, I want you to really look at what it is that someone committed on your behalf years ago, or perhaps you as an adult committed, and what we recommit to today. 
This being the first Sunday of a calendar year, it invites us to consider how we might change what we do, add to what we do, expand and extend what we do, not only as individuals, but as a church community for the good of everyone. Because you see, good works, what we do in the community, how we show love without any expectation of repayment, is the mark of a good Christian life. Now, I'm very excited about 2018. 2018, to me, being having finished one whole year at St. Michael, one whole calendar year, I'm very excited about what we are going to be doing in 2018. There's plenty of exciting things on board for us this year, and we'll talk about them all year long. But for those of you who may be looking for a church family, looking for a way to begin to express this desire to follow Christ, you will see in your bulletins and along the walls lots of opportunities to start your own journey again. Perhaps there has been a separation or a lull, and you're looking to reignite that passion, reignite that life. We have opportunities for you to plug in, and perhaps you've been plugged in and you want to expand. There are opportunities for that expansion as well. Because you see, the good works that we do together here is what really defines the lifetime journey that we begin at baptism. Christmas can seem like such an exclamation point, a period at the end of the year. But in reality, for us, Christmas and the epiphany and the baptism of the Lord is the way we begin our year. Advent was just the start. And now we shift into the season of epiphany when the work of Christmas truly begins. And that got me thinking about a poem that I had not heard for a long time. I was reminded of this past year. And, you know, I rarely do something like this, but I'm going to leave you with a poem. This poem comes from Howard Thurman, one of our great theologians, and it is called The Work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, to make music in the heart. Christmas is not an end. Baptism is not an end. But it is only the beginning. And for each one of us, we are invited to begin again today to look forward in 2018 to what we can do together, what we, when we give our gifts and give of ourselves to this community, how we can change the world for the good. Today, we begin our work again, and thanks be to God for that. Amen.